Hi, Dr. Karen Can here, and welcome to this week's Spiritual Medicine Digest. So the energies that have been happening lately continues along the same kind of theme as before, a lot of toxin releases and things that um, no longer belong to us. I think we're going to keep seeing this, except there are going to be different types of toxins or low vibrational energies that we're healing from our energetic, physical bodies, both uh, in the past, uh, current timeline, future timelines. So that includes um, post-hypnotic suggestions, maybe ideas that you're allergic to, uh, curses, things that were maybe handed down. Um, and uh, you know, if you if you listen to this week's radio show, we spoke with Tyson Bennigan about things like that. Um, you know, exercising you know, what we used to call demons or low vibrational energy beings, entities, and, and really healing them and us at the same time. Nothing to be scared about, but to be informed about and to be able to clear yourself. So if you haven't listened to the show, I highly recommend that you do that now. If you're on my mailing list, you have the link already, or you can go to my blog or just click the radio button on my website, KarenCan.com, to listen to the latest radio shows. So one of the things I want to talk about today is about healthy boundaries. I may have mentioned it before, but Mother Earth is really um, shifting into the space of uh, more and more light, which means that things that are not for our highest and greatest good are being peeled away. And so you're going to have challenges with regards to your healthy boundaries. So things are going to really start bugging you when... It doesn't feel good. And you think, well, gee, how could I tolerate this person or toxic relationship or, you know, this issue for all these years and suddenly I can't stand it anymore? That's a sign you're ascending. So we're asked to be uh, releasing all unhealthy boundaries. And one of the symptoms of that is that I've noticed that patients will come in completely what I consider polarity reversed. So their brain balance will be completely reversed. Now, last week we talked about that and it being uh, a lot due to geoengineering and harp and, and scalar energies uh, being blasted into our ionosphere, which messes with our energy field. But I'm also finding that a lot of people will test reverse, but what's really going on is they're automatically proxying for someone close to them. In other words, they start taking on other people's stuff. Now, this might have not happened before until now when we're being asked to really shore up and heal and get our boundaries more healthy. Um, so if you're a muscle tester, if you do dousing, you can check yourself and ask, how healthy are my energetic boundaries? And get a number from 0 to 100. Hopefully, it'll be closer to 100% healthy rather than closer to the 0. You can also ask, about how healthy are my relationship boundaries? So these are the things we've been asking uh, of my patients and clients uh, in and out of the office about how healthy those relationships are and uh, those boundaries are so very very important and then if you find that your boundaries are not 100 percent or in the high 90s of health and and you haven't been feeling good lately or you suddenly took a turn for the worse uh symptom ones could be because automatically you're starting to feel other people's stuff whereas before you did not so if you have a troubled child or a husband or wife or friend or sister or brother you might start feeling their stuff without you even knowing it now of course i can test that remotely in people but if you know how to muscle test um, then you will notice that your muscle you know it's off you know you're not when you say your name it's not you anymore you know uh, so you can check to see if I'm proxying for someone so if your muscle testing is is pretty solid then you can just ask am I is any are any of these symptoms having to do with me proxying for someone else am I feeling someone else's stuff and then ask how healthy your boundaries are and then we're asked to shore up those boundaries so how do we do that well um, you can do a visualization but oftentimes what I do is just cancel out all the imbalances that cause unhealthy boundaries so I take a look Look at what's in the emotion code or the body code uh, and just see you know is it a you know toxin issue or is it a trapped emotion is it a psychic trauma is it a miasm that you inherited from uh, one of your parents on a distort which is a distortion in the energy field so it can be all these different things so we can actually clear those things and voila your boundaries show up and then you don't automatically proxy for other things or people that you shouldn't and that includes mother earth too some of us have that issue 
of automatically proxying for Mother Earth when she's in trouble. Now, sometimes that's a healthy thing if that's part of your soul's mission, but sometimes it's a not a healthy thing if you have very weak energetic boundaries and you're not working on it. So if you have not taken my Light Warrior training class, you definitely want to do that. It's free. It's on Learn It Live. So you can go to www.karencan.com forward slash light warrior all one word and you can take that training for free to show you how to ground clear your energy field um, put up your protective shield uh, which is unfortunately for many of us necessary uh, because we've got uh, intrusions past present future that are still giving us symptoms in this timeline uh, the other thing I want to talk to you about uh, is uh, the other things we're releasing um, negative vows and contracts that no longer serve us and some of these are even from the future so we are creating our futures yes but also we have future lives as well and so believe it or not we can actually heal all lives all at once but it takes intention and definitely some diligence in doing that so every day I do my spiritual energy healing exercises and get closer and closer to clearing you know all the different layers of imbalances that prevent us from being completely who we are true selves and also work on worldly healing as well to release and heal those entities that might be annoying us or uh, bothering uh, people they themselves need healing so I've worked on communication systems the last couple of weeks uh, since I've been having so many different computer related issues related to entity interference. I've been working on that well and so far that's really really helped quite a bit. In fact my new computer I blessed it and cleared it before I even turned it on and so it's working perfectly. All right last thing is um, how to pray. Now I know this is kind of funny to interject this but uh, um, recently a family member got very very sick and you know possibly could have even died and um, one of the things that I learned from Greg Braden, his Science of Miracles DVD, which I highly recommend, and several of his books that I've read, is that um, when we pray for something, a lot of people think that it's a prayer of supplication, so meaning we're begging God to help us, like, please help us, please, you know, help us with this, please help us with that. Uh, but that is not the most effective prayer, believe it or not. The most effective prayer, and that actually proven this in quantum physics, which is very fascinating to me. But the most effective prayer is seeing that what you're praying for has already happened in your mind. So when I was praying for my sick relative, I saw him the way I would like to see him, healthy, happy, joking around. And I kept seeing that picture over and over in my mind. And I kept sending him energetically these feelings of love, of, of I know how much he loves his family, his beloved granddaughter. Um, and so I kept fit sending those feelings to him. So instead of seeing him in my mind and feeling sorry for him and feeling upset and worried and seeing him sick with all those tubes sticking out of his body, no, no, no. The way I prayed was to see how I want to see him uh, and that that creates the reality that we really want to create. So that is your tip on how to do a prayer properly. <laughs> you can do whatever way you want, of course, but uh, definitely this way works a lot better than the other way I used to do it. So I wanted to share that tip with you. And just a side note that uh, relative is back home, um, healthy with no long-term uh, negative effects uh, from what happened. And uh, I am just thrilled and feel very blessed. So bless you this week. And remember to subscribe to my videos and feel free to comment if, if you have any questions. Uh, maybe we can include that in the next rendition of the Spiritual Medicine Digest. And go to my website too and get on my mailing list so you don't miss a single episode. So www.karencan.com and have a fabulous week. Bye. Happy Healthy Boundaries.